The our member for Bruce Gray Owen Sound. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I, look, I want to thank the member from uh, Foothills for bringing this bill forward again. He had brought this forward in a previous parliament. I believe then I got the chance to uh, jointly second it. Unfortunately, I missed the opportunity, so I do appreciate the opportunity to be able to get uh, you know, a short inter intervention in uh, to highlight the importance of this bill. Some of the previous speakers have already highlighted really one of the key aspects of this bill. Not only is it about biosecurity and ensuring our food supply and food chains are protected, but it's about education. It's about letting Canadians know that in Canada here, we have some of the best farmers, food uh, people in the food industry and the agricultural sector that really take care of their, uh, of their animals, the food that they're raising, and that they don't have anything to really uh, to be worried about. And so I think this bill does a great job of providing that uh, security and that reassurance, but that education. I want to sh share a little bit of my own past uh, history, although I'm not as maybe experienced as some of the mem members here in the House. Uh, but, but I grew up on a farm, Madam Speaker. I raised 700 ducks, a couple hundred chickens, a couple hundred turkeys, 50 geese um, every year uh, in the summers. And, uh, you know, free range, pretty, pretty loosey goosey, I could say almost. There wasn't, it, it, was a, it wasn't what you'd call a mass. Um, production uh, facility by any stretch and we we handled everything from raising them from day uh, day olds uh, right through to butchering time good thing about being the eldest of five uh, five boys I did all the chores for growing them come butchering time I, I let my uh, brothers do the, uh, the 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 butchering and the plucking um, but my point is growing up there and then you know join, jo after you high school joining the military kind of being on the road and not being in the local farms near as much as I was growing up and, and working, uh, I was shocked when I got back into, uh, when I really got home and made the transition into uh, politics and got out to visit the farmers in my area. And I'm privileged to, I believe, represent the, uh, the riding with the largest uh, beef producing per capita in Eastern Canada. Um, we got dairy farmers, I got turkeys, chickens, we got everything. And uh, when I've gone in to visit my beef farmers, and well, all my farmers, the, how impressed I was, just how serious they take their operations, how serious they take the health of their animals, how clean everything is. It, it's, I would argue that, that most of the barns that I've been in are, are cleaner than my nine-year-old daughter's bedroom. Uh, like, it is impressive to see the care that they take and, and I think that's the essential message that needs to there, it, it, not only for the health of the animals, but um, just how serious our farmers take this. Uh, there's been mention of mental health. Our farmers are in a very volatile in industry. They, they're subject to everything from climate change to the, uh, the market uh, volatility, and there's stress, right? It, 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 their day-to-day -day lives get impacted uh, for a number of factors, and the, and the last thing they need, uh, you know, and I'm not trying to be provocative, but is uneducated people that are, you know, interfering with their ability to, for their livelihood and to put food, uh, food on the table for all Canadians. And uh, we, we have some great examples historically. The first question I had the privilege of asking in the House of Commons here was tied to Mad Cow or BSC, and wondering then why the government had, had failed to uh, react quick enough on uh, getting our status changed, our negligible st uh, status changed with the uh, World uh, Food and Health Organization uh, because it ended up costing uh, Canadians in our ag industry, or beef farmers in particular, millions of dollars. Uh, and, but my point is th those lessons have been learned the hard way in this country about what happens when we do have uh, any type of illness. So, Madam Speaker, I just want to again thank the member for Foothills for bringing this bill forward. It's a great bill that will help keep our food industry and our uh, uh, protected, and it's a good, good thing to see. Call the honourable member for Foothills to five minutes right of reply. The honourable member for Foothills. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I want to thank all of my colleagues uh, in this house who have spoken in support uh, of my private member's bill, which is uh, an amending the Health of Animals Act to protect the biosecurity on farms. Now, many of the questions that have been raised uh, in the speeches tonight, and, and certainly I've heard it on, online, um, is that there haven't been occasions where diseases have been spread as a result of protesters. 
And that just simply isn't the case. Uh, there was an outbreak of rotavirus uh, in Quebec when protesters uh, were found on uh, hog operations in saint Hazan, Quebec. Uh, mink farms in, in Ontario had an outbreak of canine distemper when protesters were on mink farms in Ontario. So this is happening. And we can't allow uh, this type of activity to continue if we want to protect the biosecurity not only on farms, but certainly our food security across Canada and around the world. This came about as, as from an instance that happened in my riding, and I know I've spoken about this in this house previously. When I received a call uh, from farmers in, near Fort McLeod where they woke up in the morning to check on their free-range turkey farm to have 40 protesters in the barn trying to take their animals. The stress that this put under the Shedder family is incredible and still goes on today. And we've heard that from farmers across country, across Canada who have had instances where protesters have been on their farms. They question, why me? What, what did I do to attract uh, this sort of activity? And I had many calls from farmers across Canada who were saying, like, is this open season on farmers? Are we not even safe on our own property? So there's the mental health aspect that this impacts on our farmers, but also the financial risk that this puts not only to our agriculture industry, but certainly consumers across the country. We are seeing this out uh, take place right now across Canada, but certainly in the Fraser Valley and across the prairies with the outbreak of avian flu. And I've, I know my colleagues have talked about the mental health impact this has on farmers when they're worried about protesters, but we're also dealing with euthanizing thousands and thousands of animals. BC uh, uh, chicken farmers are having to euthanize uh, complete barns of their animals. This is happening across the Western Canada and some parts of Central Canada and Eastern Canada. I can't, exp I can't even understate the impact that this has on these, these farm families who do everything they possibly can to take care of these animals and follow very strict biosecurity protocols to protect their operations. You can't imagine how difficult it is to ask a f for CFIA to come in when you have a, te a positive test of avian flu and tell that farmer that he has to put down all of his animals, that he's worked so hard to raise uh, from the chick to, uh, to uh, adulthood. It would be similar if we had an outbreak of African swine fever. The pork industry has said an outbreak of African swine fever would be a $48 billion impact on that industry as it would wipe out the hog industry in Canada. We've seen it in China where they've had to euthanize more than a million animals as a result of, the Af of African swine fever in China. We have very strict biosecurity protocols in place for these very reasons. And unfortunately, these protesters who come onto private property, in many cases, just don't understand the consequences of them going from farm to farm, operation to operation, and possibly spreading those viruses and animal-borne diseases from one farm to the next. And the consequences of that activity could be disastrous on a scale that we've never seen before in Canada. And I don't, certainly don't want to see another outbreak of something similar that we had with BSC, be that African swine fever, foot and mouth disease, and we're already seeing the implications of, of avian flu. The other question we've had, Madam Speaker, is this is the, this is the gag, the ag gag bill. That simply is not the case, and I can't stress this enough. This does not stop protesters from protesting on public land outside of the farm. And it certainly does not stop whistleblowers or employees on the farm from reporting issues that they see that are not up to standard. In fact, those employees and the farm families themselves have a moral and legal obligation to report any poor activity that does not meet our standards. So, Madam Speaker, I want to thank all of my colleagues in this House for supporting this legislation, supporting our farm families, and supporting our agriculture industry. And I look forward to discussing this further at committee. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker.